this is Diana. Brightway Instance give you one thing you can do today to move your creativity ahead. And today I'll be reading from my book, The Bright Way, Five Steps to Freeing the Creative Within. Today we'll be looking at a passage rather than a bright way activity, and this passage sets you up for the next bright way activity. The passage also gives you a lot to work with and to think about, so you'll be able to have something to do creatively today. So I'd like to go to the principle of sacred reciprocity. And I'm going to explain what this is. This is here on page 21, as you can see. The principle of sacred reciprocity. Your human creativity enables you to wield massive power. A power that affects almost every element and living thing today. How you use that power is up to you. Sometimes people fear that when they open the creativity floodgates, terrible things will be unleashed, as in the myth of Pandora's box. They cite the creation of the atom bomb as one of the worst examples of this. They see it as the ultimate example of creativity gone wrong, of creativity in service to life destruction rather than life affirmation. I understand this valid concern. I'm grateful when people bring it up because it ushers in a key principle of the bright way. There is a way to ensure you create from a place of positivity, heart-centeredness, and life affirmation rather than life destruction. It's a technique I use every day to guide me toward creating with love, not fear. What is this creativity safety valve? It's called sacred reciprocity. The energy of sacred reciprocity weaves through every page of this book. Sacred reciprocity is a South American wisdom philosophy with parallels in most other cultures and eras. It's a very universal thing. In a nutshell, sacred reciprocity is the force that seeks balanced relationship in all things so that healthy life can flourish. And here's a beautiful picture from our Vlad. And you can see we have sacred reciprocity here. The energy is exchanging from one person or one thing to another. And it's an equal balance. Now, this energy exchange does not have to be the same currency. For example, perhaps this is a student and teacher, and the student is paying the teacher in monetary currency. The teacher is exchanging wisdom and knowledge, experience. And this is an equal balance right here if the relationship is in sacred reciprocity. Now, when a relationship is not in sacred reciprocity, you can see that from one person to another, or one energy to another, the currency is being transferred, but it's not being returned. It's going off in another direction. So that is not sacred reciprocity right here, not this one. So again, sacred reciprocity is the force that seeks balanced relationship in all things so that healthy life can flourish. We want healthy life. This is something I think we can all agree on. And sacred reciprocity is that force that creates the balance so that healthy life can flourish. Let's go a little further. All right, this is page 22. Am I in the screen? Yes. Sacred reciprocity represents an equal exchange of energy that is healthy and helpful for all parties involved. You've probably heard the phrase, everything is interconnected. What does this actually mean? Sacred reciprocity is an elegant way to grasp and act on the aim of honored interconnection in everyday life. The famous golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, echoes the tenets 
of sacred reciprocity. The more you look, the more you'll find messages pointing you towards sacred reciprocity hidden in plain sight. Let's look more closely. We discussed the miraculous power of creativity to reconnect the creator with herself and the world at large, so that's earlier in the book. But do all connections lead to life affirmation? What about connections that are toxic? According to sacred reciprocity, these are not true connections. Instead, they are one-way drains. Sacred reciprocity is the most reliable tool I know of to assess whether you are in healthy connection. Sacred reciprocity is non-judgmental and clear. It offers this simple yardstick. Ask yourself, am I choosing love or fear? When we are in sacred reciprocity, we make decisions from a place of love and enthusiasm. And marvelously, an equal balance of love and enthusiasm will return to us in the big picture. The scope of sacred reciprocity, also known as right relationship, allows it to deal in multiple currencies. That is, time and money are not the only ways to get in balance with our creative work, or anything else for that matter. So I'd like to pause here and carry on another time. I'd love you to think about what I shared. What does sacred reciprocity mean to you? Uh, how does it play in your life? There will be more reading on this and there will be an activity around it. So how does sacred reciprocity sit with you? How does thinking in that framework give you clarity and direction going ahead in life? I'd love to hear. Bye for now. Thank you.